Today, I'm going to talk about the benefits, the side effects, and the dangers of alkaline water. Now, naturally, when you're drinking water from a spring or from a well or an artesian well, it's going to be alkaline. And it's alkaline because of the minerals, calcium, magnesium, which are both alkaline. But definitely people have this idea that anything acid is unhealthy or it will cause sickness, and anything alkaline is healthy, which is absolutely not true because in our bodies we have a lot of different acids. Nucleic acids, as in your DNA. You have hydrochloric acid as your stomach acid. You even have lactic acid that's in your colon to help you digest. You have amino acids and fatty acids. So just because something is acid doesn't make it bad. Okay, we have this scale of acidity and alkalinity. And right in the center is seven, which is neutral. And distilled water is neutral. And as the numbers go up, okay, above seven, okay, so you have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 14, things are becoming more alkaline. And just so you know, at the very top of the list, like 14, which is extremely alkaline, you have things like drain cleaner, bleach, which is, I think, 13, and soap, which is, you know, it could be anywhere between 8 and 10. So those are all uh, alkaline. Then as we go lower, we get things like lemon juice and apple cider vinegar and tomatoes and, of course, soda. Those are all acidic. But when we talk about pH in our body, most of the time we're referencing our blood pH, which normally should be slightly alkaline. So if neutral was 7, your blood is 7.34 to 7.45. And I think the biggest myth about pH is that it's very difficult to change your pH by taking something. And I'm talking about changing the pH of your blood. So whether someone's eating more alkaline food or more acidic food, that pH in your blood is probably unlikely to change. Our body tends to uh, control and regulate the pHs of the different parts of our body. So for example, your saliva should be slightly alkaline. Your blood should be slightly alkaline. Your stomach should be very, very, very acidic. But your small intestine that goes right after the stomach should be alkaline. Yet the large bowel should be acidic. Not like the stomach, but slightly acidic. And of course, we have the gallbladder and bile, which should be alkaline. So we don't want to alkalize the body, okay? That's not a smart thing to do. And primarily, the reason for that is because when you take something that's alkaline, and specifically I'm talking about alkaline water, you are going to alter the stomach's pH, which should be between 1 and 3, very acidic. And doing that is going to come with a package, like you may end up with heartburn, acid reflux, gas, GERD. You might have an increased risk of infection. You might have hair loss. You might have arrhythmias. And I'm not talking about alkaline water from the spring or artesian well or some type of water that you would get naturally with the minerals. And I'm mainly talking about a water that's created maybe from a machine or something that has nothing to do with minerals. So there's a machine out there that you can get that alkalizes the water. And they don't add minerals to it. They put electricity through the water and they alter the, the water and take out the acidic part, leaving this water very alkaline. I remember in practice once, testing someone's urine after they used this machine for about two weeks, and the pH of their urine, which normally should be acidic, was like nine, which is extremely alkaline for your urine. And so this will really put them in a situation where they're very susceptible to having infections. They can't kill off microbes that well. So there is some huge side effects from drinking a lot of extremely alkaline water. But there's not gonna be any side effects from drinking your spring water that's alkaline or some bottled spring water that has uh, a lot of minerals in it because it's made alkaline in a natural way. So here's some missing information that, um, that you need to know. The pH in your stomach should be between one and three, very, very acidic. And the purpose of that acidity is to help you break down protein, is to help you absorb minerals, also uh, absorb B12, as well as to kill off pathogens, right? I'm talking about bacteria, fungus, parasites that could be in your food, okay? It's kind of a natural barrier, your immune barrier. And so as we age, we lose this stomach acid. People that are taking antacids 
are putting their pH in their stomach in the wrong direction because the actual cause of heartburn, GERD, and acid reflux, most of the time, is this. Your stomach acids are not strong enough and that valve at the top of the stomach is not closing, so you're regurgitating acids. The thing to do to correct this is to take more acids, not to take less acids or not to alkalize the stomach with anything that just makes it worse. So if we alkalize the stomach, we start developing a condition called hypochlorhydria or like no acid in your stomach, which is called achlorhydria. And in that situation, not only are you not going to be able to digest protein, so these undigested protein particles get into the small intestine, into the large intestine, and it starts to affect the immune system in a negative way. You may start developing allergies. There was an interesting study done on mice where they got rid of the stomach acid, fed them fish, and they developed allergies to fish protein, which is interesting. So not being able to digest protein can increase risk of getting allergies, can create gas, uh, and all sorts of like things like constipation. The other important thing about stomach acids is to be able to absorb iron, calcium, magnesium, zinc, potassium. Without having stomach acid, you could easily be deficient in these minerals, not to mention the vitamin B12. So all this can create anemia and it can lead to many other issues. And of course, this acid kills off microbes. So if you can't kill off microbes, you end up with microbes in your small intestine, okay? And that term is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is a pretty nasty condition. So that means every time you eat, you're going to feel bloated. And it usually is created because your stomach acid is not strong. The side effects from people taking an acids are the same as those who have not enough stomach acid. So those are some of the side effects of alkaline water. Now, should we drink uh, acidic water? Well, Personally, I found that when I drink carbonated water and it's slightly acidic, and I actually can digest better, especially if I add a little teaspoon of either apple cider vinegar or maybe some lemon juice. Now, since we're on the topic of pH, I want to just talk about one more thing. If you actually develop a condition called alkalosis, which your pH is definitely way too alkaline. So here are the side effects from having alkalosis. Number one, you are going to have low potassium you're going to have low calcium. That calcium is going to bind to protein. Now, this calcium is unavailable for the muscle contraction relaxation effect. And you're going to start having these weird uh, twitches. It's called tetany. Sometimes it's underneath the eye. Sometimes it's in the arm. It could be anywhere in the body. It can also affect the heart rhythm. You can start developing heart arrhythmias. The muscle is greatly affected in an alkalosis state. So either the muscle is going to be in spasm, it's going to be crampy, it's going to be in pain, it's going to be weak, but overall you're going to have some really abnormal sensations in the body, both nerve-wise and muscle-wise. And it can even get so severe that you can go into either a seizure or a coma. We don't want alkalosis and we don't want to be too acidic. We want to have the right pH for the right part of your body. Having the right pH, especially in our stomachs, will allow certain enzymes to work. The enzyme that helps you digest protein is not activated unless you have the strong acid. And the same thing with the small intestine. Uh, certain enzymes, like for example, for carbohydrates, are activated when it's alkaline. But like I said before, different parts of your body require different pHs. You know, where I live right now, I actually have um, spring water, okay? And it comes from a spring and we recently drilled for water at a different location, okay? And they had to go, I think, um, 130 feet below rock. They had to drill through rock, like granite, to find this water. And so I asked the guy, I said, like, where does that water come from? And he said, well, we don't really know. Some people say it comes from the rain and snow that melts through and it seeps through the soil and it gets into the earth and it kind of forms these little pools and pockets. But my thought is, how does it get through these rock formations? And so what I learned about that, it's still a theory on where this water comes from. So it got me curious. So I did another deep dive into where our water really comes from and I found some really interesting information. They actually found the chemistry of water, which is not in the water form. It was basically 
hydrogen and oxygen embedded into a mineral. And apparently this came from a volcano. So it was very, very deep. They actually calculated it to be about 400 miles deep into the earth. And apparently, which is even more interesting, there's enough water down there, or at least pre-water that can turn into water, to literally fill up an ocean. So the advantage of these minerals and water, okay, give us some additional health benefits, but only if they're created in a natural way, not from a machine that alkalizes the water, which omits the help from the minerals. Now, since we're on the topic of water, if you have not seen my video on carbonation in water, I put that video up right here. Check it out.